Hi, my name is Monet. My pronouns are she, her, or they, them, and I'm a marketing and recruitment assistant at the University of Cumbria. And I identify as queer and gender non-conforming. For me, being queer means just not being heterosexual. Gender non-conforming means that I just don't conform to what society says a gender should look or act like. I was born and raised in the south of the United States in Georgia, which is right in the middle of the Bible Belt, uh, which is an area that's very uh, conservative and religious, very traditionalist in its beliefs. So even though I had a very accepting and open-minded household, the external environment that I was in uh, was not as accepting and understanding of different people. And I think it was because of this external environment that I was in that I started to get the uh, concept in my mind that being heterosexual was the default of being a human being. And I think that's what caused me to later on have some very severe internalized homophobia. It was almost like I had to prove to myself that I wasn't exclusively heterosexual before I could um, accept anything outside of that. And it actually wasn't until I got to university that the penny kind of dropped for me. I remember sitting in a gender and sexuality class um, and they started talking about gender and sexuality being a spectrum as opposed to a binary. And that was the first time I had really kind of formally been introduced to that concept. It was kind of that moment where I was like, oh, I, I don't have to be one or the other, actually. I can be somewhere along these spectrums. For me, the most impactful LGBTQ moment in history that, that I kind of experienced, not firsthand, but kind of secondhand experienced, was the Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando, Florida. You know, as I learned more about it throughout the day and heard more about it, you know, that's when I start to started to really come to terms with the, the reality of the situation and the gravitas of the situation that had happened there. And it was directed at the community I'm a part of. And that hit me really hard. I think when you kind of grow up in the South and, and, and kind of come into being queer, I think there's always that kind of rhetoric in the back of your mind that you could be a target for violence because of who you identify as. There was a text message conversation between a, a young gay man and his mother. During the shooting, he and a few other people ran into the bathroom of the nightclub on the text conversation, you know, telling his mother that there was somebody in the club that was shooting at them and as the conversation went on it was you know he's we can hear it happening um we can we can hear the screams he's coming and then he just goes i'm i'm going to die a and says i love you to his mom on this text conversation and that was the last thing that that mother ever received from her son. It was that moment that I, 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 I actively remember thinking, I need to do more as a member of the queer community to educate people and, and to have conversations and, and, and get represent, positive representation out there so that this kind of hate just gets eliminated if I can help just enough so that the next generation doesn't have to watch an event like that, I'll be very, very happy. And that's why I'm always really proud to be a part of the LGBTQ staff network at the University of Cumbria because it's all about continuing those conversations and having support, not just for people within the community, but allies of it as well. 